Hey guys, Ryan here for Bender Wind. Hope everyone's doing well today. Uh, took a loss yesterday. It was uh, it was one of the tougher ones we've had this year. Um, we need the under eight in the game. Everything seemed to be going pretty well. Bottom of the ninth, uh, we had two runs to spare. And uh, yeah, two run shot. So two run shot tied the game. Obviously, someone's got to score. So uh, our under eight was done. Um, part of the risk, guys, in betting baseball in September is, <clears throat> pardon me, um, managers are uh, not always going to make the best decisions in the interest of winning that particular game. And, you know, especially when we have teams like Miami who are, you know, totally out of it, the managers in September want to have a look at some prospects, some younger players, some pitchers, and um, what we in the industry like to call grocery baggers. And every once in a while, they bring in um, a grocery bagger and, you know, they give up two, three runs and cost you a game. But these are the risks of betting um, baseball in September. Just so you guys know, the term grocery bagger comes from, uh, I think it originally comes from the movie Major League, though. But um, basically, it's a guy who is so terrible, he'll probably get a job bagging groceries in the next few months. So that's what a grocery bagger is. And uh, you see a lot of them in September. Um, you know, it, it, it's hard to predict. It's, it's part of it. Um, but, you know, you, you just hope that, um, you know, it, it doesn't affect you in the game. But, I mean, again, you know, in most situations there, two-run lead, we probably wouldn't have a guy with a, whatever it was, 5.2 ERA um, and multiple blown saves coming in to try and close out a game. But then again, it's Miami, so maybe we would have. Uh, <clears throat> anyways, guys, um, another bet, uh, I placed yesterday. I just, uh, want to throw this out there. Um, so yesterday Houston went off at minus 450. So when Houston was minus 450, um, obviously that, you know, there's a ripple effect of, of value that's created in other bets associated with that. So, um, I had a very, very small play on Seattle yesterday. Nothing crazy like a quarter of 1% of my bankroll, so like very, very small, just because, again, I'm not looking to pass up that value. Um, I, I said in the past, you can like literally, when you get lines of like 400 or higher, or, or well, I guess, you know, slightly over 400, um, you can almost indiscriminately just bet them. But again, I, I didn't really like the matchup yesterday with Cole going. Um, so, you know, even getting four to one is... It was, you know, borderline. But I obviously, I, I still saw value there because I don't think any team should ever be, you know, plus 400 in baseball. Um, <clears throat> but a bet that I did take on that game, and it's interesting. And, um, you know, you talk about how value gets created and on a parallel to, to a situation. So because the line was set at, um, minus 450 and drifted up closer to 500 and back down again. Like it was, it was all over the place. But let's, because it was at minus 450, there's ancillary bets. There are other side bets that use that as a starting point, a jump off point. Um, one of those bets is on uh, one of the sites I bet on. It allows you to uh, take the run line and tease it the opposite way. So what I did was I teased Seattle to minus two and a half, which means Seattle has to win by three runs. Now, beating Houston in the first place is a pretty huge feat, as the line indicates. But beating them by three runs, I mean, how often is that going to happen? But, and there's a lot of buts to this, the reason I took this is because this was where the value was on this game. Not just on, you know, betting the line and getting that. Every once in a while, a game, as we know in baseball, guys, Baseball has the highest proportion of underdogs that win. I think it's something like 40, 43 point something percent of underdogs win in baseball. Like it's high. So you get um, you get this like disproportionate like kind of odds on one side where it, it should never be that high. And, and it, because their starting point was a minus 450 and I was taking the win by three runs, I got 27 to 1. 27 to 1. So it's pretty easy to, f to figure out the, um, it's pretty easy to figure out, you know, the value in that. Ask yourself, 
if Houston and Seattle played that game yesterday, where it was a tight game through most of the game, Houston won three nothing. They they scored a run in the ninth, I think, and um, they were only up two nothing most of the game. If they played that game twenty seven times, would Seattle win a few of those by three runs? You bet. You bet. And those games that they win, and I get 27 to 1 on my money, huge payout. And I don't condone like long shot, you know, sports betting and stuff. Like it's very rare that, you know, I don't play parlays. But this opportunity presented itself where I need a team like Seattle to win a baseball game, which is very unpredictable, as we all know, by three runs. One out of 27 times to be profitable. So I thought that was a good bet yesterday, guys. Again, looking for value in kind of not just the bets, but, you know, parallel bets as well. Where do you find the value? And I, I, I feel like the, at 27 to 1, the value um, was definitely on the Seattle minus 2.5 there. All right, guys. Let's get into today's game. So uh, coming off a tough, a tough loss yesterday, you know, I could fire a massive favorite at you guys and, you know, get everyone back happy and cheering. But you know what? That's not where the value is, guys. So um, we're on a dog today in baseball. Um, here's a little uh, here's a little tidbit of information. So underdogs. I already talked about underdogs, how they, they cover in baseball more than any other sport. Um, but coming off a loss, and you know what? For I'll get that exact number of what they cover for you guys in the next video. I'll, I'll do that for you. I'll get the exact number. But I know it's the number one sport for underdogs. So underdogs, guys, coming off a loss where they're getting less than 30% of the money bet on them. So most of the money is going on the other team. And you have a closing line of plus 120 to plus 185. So this eliminates the games that are, you know, barely an underdog and it also eliminates the games where you know over 185 it's you know they're a huge underdog so um that comes in at 48 percent of the time and that is a huge roi we're talking about uh 20 i didn't write it down, 21 percent or 20.8 percent roi which is absolutely massive you can't ignore that value um on today's particular game what we're looking at uh, we have Minnesota playing Detroit. Detroit is at, uh, I think they opened at plus 190, and they have dropped to plus 180 uh, to 182. I got it at 182, but you'll be looking for it at plus 180 to plus 182. Um, we, so we have, we have a steam move at Bet Chris Sports, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, steam play came in, betting Detroit. Uh, reverse line movement at uh, sportsbook.com, same thing, 11 a.m. Um, and, and we have 85% of the money on Minnesota in this game. So huge contrarian play. Like these are, the, these are the types of plays that Vegas love to get, where we have a team, okay, that potentially has, you know, they're on the higher end of the, the 120, 185. So, um, you know, I've, I've done a, a higher end model here as well, where basically, um, that same scenario I mentioned, coming off a loss, getting less than 30% of the money, where the line in this particular case is 165 to 185, we can expect that to win 43% of the time. So Vegas has a scenario where 43% of the time, they're going to win 85% of the money. It's a great proposition for them. But we have an opportunity where 43% of the time, we're gonna win plus 182. <clears throat> and that's a lot of value, guys. And that's a, it's enough value that that makes it our best play of the day. Are there other plays today that have a higher likelihood of winning? Absolutely. But guys, what we're doing here is finding value. And that's the most important thing, okay? You could have you could have, um, you know, a winning percentage. Like I, on my on my site, on YouTube, on everywhere, like on, sorry, on Instagram, Facebook, I advertise my record with the win percentage because it's widely recognized in this industry. I really wish that ROI was more recognized in this industry because ROI is so much more important than record. You know, I could be advertising my record. I mean, you guys know it's not the case, but I could be taking a bunch of minus 400 favorites, you know, advertise that I'm you know, 
10 and four, actually be losing money. But, you know, people look at that and think, oh, wow, look at that. He's really hitting 66% or whatever. You know, I, 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 could, pro I could probably hit, you know, high 60% if I took nothing but minus 400 favorites or minus 500 favorites, right? But, I mean, the real indicator, guys, is ROI. So I advertise, obviously, just so you guys, you know, have an idea. Um, I think most of you guys know that I'm not out there taking favorites every day. In fact, I rarely take favorites. But, um, you know, ROI is, is so much more important. And people get hung up on the record and they, and they get hung up on, oh, you know, I, I, have, I have to win. I have to do this. Guys, sometimes taking a play where you're going to lose 57% um, of the time, when, when you're getting plus 180, that's worth so much more than any bet where you're going to win, you know, 55, 56% laying money. Okay. So, um, that's pretty much it for today, guys. So pardon me, our, um, our pick for today, uh, we have Minnesota playing Detroit and we are taking Detroit plus 180 to plus 182 guys. Um, that's it for today. If you guys could leave a like, I really appreciate it. Um, really helps us grow. And uh, that's it, guys. So as always, have a very lucky day.